data was always important mm. for the federations. Mm. In the 90s, there were two studies. Mm. There was a study by Peter Ngao at the University of Nairobi, and there was another study by a group called Matrix. Mm. And these studies said that there were lots of slum dwellers. They estimated half the city were slum dwellers. And at the time, there was no constituency called slum dwellers. Mm. Slums were not recognized as a legitimate part of the city. And these studies helped catalyze the movement. Mm. They gave the movement some form. It made, it made sense. But the movement used data that way mm. for advocacy. It was broad data. And then when Mungano got affiliated to SDI around about 1999, SDI uh, affiliates from South Africa and India came to Kenya and said, there's a tool, there's a tool called enumerations. And Mungano took it up immediately. And the reason was it looked as the millennium was changing, that there would be opportunities for communities to get land, mm. they were speaking to the city. And for the professionals working with Mungano and for Mungano, there was a bit of anxiety. Who, who in these settlements would get the land? Mm. The, there was a need. Um, if these opportunities came to pass, um, there was a need to establish who in the settlements would get land. And therefore, when, when the Indians and the South Africans came with a tool and said, uh, let's try it, mm. it made a lot of sense for Mungano. And, and the first place they tried it was in Huruma, and we were working with the city in Huruma. We are having a dialogue for a possible upgrade, um, and therefore we, we went straight ahead. Even as the Indians were still here telling us about enumerations, we started to do them. Uh, it was a very rudimentary uh, type of enumeration. We photocopied the forms at night. Mm. We, we land in the field, mm. but we counted. Mm. And at the same time, there was an urgent need in Korogocho uh, settlement where the president had come to the community and said, well, the land should go to the people. And there was a need to establish which people. The Korogocho story has a lot to do with Father Alex. I think what happened, if I remember right, is that uh, the structure owners in Korogocho had formed themselves into an association. And somehow they had managed to meet up with the president and had persuaded the president at that time, Moi, to allocate the land of Korogocho to them. Now, on our, sense, on our side, and I think Father Alex especially felt that if the structure owners were allocated land, then many, many people in Korogocho would be dispossessed. So we started talking, and it was felt that we needed to link up with the government so that we can begin to influence the way the government handled slum upgrading. So at the time, um, Madoka was the minister in charge of in the president's office, I think home affairs, if I'm not wrong. So we went to see Madoka with Father Alex, and Madoka then referred us to the provincial administrator for Nairobi. So we went to see the PC, at the time he was called Minor, the PC Minor. So we spoke to him, and we agreed that it was important that we do an enumeration in Korogocho, that we can find out who actually lives there. 
before the allocations were made. So as a result of that, we reached out to the Indians and it was agreed that we needed to go for an exchange visit to India, so that at least the government could begin to understand how exchanges and how enumerations were carried out. So an exchange visit was organized and we went to India with um, the PC, PC minor, and the director of planning at the time, who was called Kibinda, and myself. And after we had finished that, that visit, it was agreed that we would come back and we would begin to do enumerations with the assistance of the Indian Federation. So that's then how we started doing the enumerations in Korogocho. That first enumeration uh, tested, really tested. It tested us because it brought out the power of, of information. One, the community were not decided on who would get land, the tenants or the structure owners. And it was resisted. The collecting of names of tenants was resisted very powerfully. And, and then we saw that this tool was, was really powerful. We worked with central government at the time to do the enumeration in Korogocho. Um, we got a lot of support from uh, affiliates, other affiliates of SDI. Zimbabwe, South Africa, the Indians. Um, we got the provincial commissioner of Nairobi and all the chiefs and all the district commissioners coming to Korogocho just to make sure this happened, uh, that we could create a set of data that would be acceptable to the state for the allocation of land. Mm. The Enumeration was resisted by owners of structures. Uh, they did not feel that it was in their interest to have tenants counted. And after that, we, we came back, we collected a huge amount of data. We collected 18,000 households, and I think 40,000 people at the time. And then we started struggling with how do we present this? Do we give the government a list? What is the best way to do this? And, and that set us off on a journey, a journey that continues today about how do you present data? Can it be verified? How accurate is it? Mm. Uh, we had to define things like what, what is a household? Uh, what constitutes a household? Uh, we struggled with issues like a 15-year-old who lives in a shack by themselves uh, next to his mother's shack and describes himself as an individual household. Do we believe that? Mm. How do we define these things? So in doing that, then we started to unravel the complexity of informal settlements. From the outside they look like a mass of housing. Uh, when you do enumerations then you start to learn a lot more about the settlements, the dynamics, the relationships, the community and so on. But that is, that is where we started.